Hey, welcome to CJ Ben's Finds. Today, I'm going to show you how I'm going to pack out this eBay sale. We sold this 21 inch tall by 6 inches around handmade carved sculpture native figure. When I went to the boxes that we keep in house, there was none. So what I'm going to have to do is make a box. So I scoured around, looked and found a box for a pop-up tent that I had saved and it's going to work out perfect. It's 54 inches long, so we're going to cut it down, but it's 8 by 8. So by the time we get the bubble wrap on this guy that's 6 inches, and he's 21, so I'm going to go ahead and cut the box 23 inches long to accommodate for the height. And at the end, I'm going to recreate these flaps that are on this end from the middle of the box. So I figured I'd go ahead and show you how I do this and in case you run into a similar problem. Put him out of the way. So the first thing I do, Give me a sharpie. I'm going to measure up from the bottom of the box, 23 inches, all the way around. Once I get the box marked all the way around, I'm going to grab my T-square and then use that to finish the measurements. Using my T-square, I'll lay it across the box, line up the two dots, and make a line. Now that I have my line, I'm going to match the flaps. So I'm going to do a seven and a quarter on this side, three and a quarter on this side seven and a quarter on the back side and a three and a quarter here. I'm going to put all those lines on the box before I do my first cut. These lines here are just to know where I can cut down to and then I'll use the box resizer to resize the box. The reason I'm measuring it and being as accurate as I can is because in the past I've just won it and said okay well that's good enough cut it off and then next thing you know you go to go put it together and it doesn't work. Measure twice, cut once, or something like that. All right, we're done. So now I'm going to grab, I'm going to do what I should do every time. Put everything back that I'm done with. Put everything back in its cubby. That way when I need it the next time, it's right where I know it's supposed to be. And grab myself a box cutter. The main thing you need to do is make sure you have a sharp knife. Because dull knives cut you, not the box. Let's go ahead and cut this. You always cut away from yourself. He says that's what I've been taught at work, and make sure that everybody does. So I'm going to do that here. We'll get on the other side of the box. There we go. Starting to come together. Trim them up a little bit. Then you've got the depth all the way down to the three and a half inch. Works with the seven. All right. Now we're going to use our resizing tool, which really works out well. You can get these for ten bucks on Amazon. Good investment. The only problem I have is you gotta tighten this screw up all the time because it comes unscrewed. So maybe not buy the $10 one, buy the $20 one. Might be better off. All right, so as you can see on here, it's a ruler. We're gonna set the first one at three and a quarter. We'll do the two small ones, bend them in. And what this does with the blade, it makes a perforation on it, just like it's a box lid. So then it'll fold right down very easily and that way if you ever try to just fold them without putting a perforation on them, they'll end up bending crooked or not really meeting up the seams the way you want. Or sometimes if you try to score the back with a, a knife, it will cut too deep and then the flap will be flappy. Not in a good way. So you just adjust it to the right depth. Stick this in there so that the, you just stick it in there, put it on the flap, and run it from side to side. All right, now we'll do the seven and a half. Go back two or three times, and that way it'll really put the perforations into it. All right. This is the original side. This is the side we made. Small back flaps go in. And these flaps over top of each other. Now you got the box. He's going to fit perfect. You got about a two inch gap from top to bottom. So we're going to fill that because you don't want it to be pushing on him or anything. It's going to break, right? If it's too tight, then you're going to put stress on this guy. The other thing you need to look at on this guy. Even though he's wooden, he does have some small, thin areas that you want to make sure you're protecting. So what I'm going to do, since my bubble wrap that I buy is only 12 inches, I'm going to wrap him long ways first, so that way I can cover the whole thing, and then come back and go around it this way with bubble wrap. So I got a long piece of bubble wrap. The other thing you need to know about bubble wrap, too, and I didn't know it until I started working in distribution, is the bubbles are supposed to face the thing you're protecting, I always put it on the outside thinking that we're cushioning it from the other side. But you're supposed to put the bubble towards the other. I would just take him 
And I'm going to offset him just slightly to the one side, cover him in bubble wrap. I'm going to lay him down. And the side that I left a little bit longer, I'm going to tape this up. I'm going to tape them together and make like a bag. Now I've got a bag and he's inside of it. All these spaces in here concern me because when it's in the box, there won't be anything keeping pressure on. I like to use peanuts because it's easier for me and I get enough shipped to me that I can use them when I need them. You could, it's probably more environmentally sound to use paper, but so I'm gonna dump some peanuts in here and fill in those gaps. Tape, a flap, and pull that tight. Be pretty well protected there. So what I'm gonna do is run one more layer of bubble wrap on him and hopefully not make him so fat that he won't fit in the box. So he's packed up and ready to go now. We just gotta put him in the box. Put things away when you're done. It's like when you're cooking. After you're done with something, you should wash it, put it back, or in the drying rack. If you're doing this kind of thing, same thing. If you're done with it, put it away, otherwise it just clutters up your space. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to tape the corrugate side that I did. Put a piece across the small sides, just to hold them in place. I like to tape my edge on this one, just to make sure it's covered. And with tape, I say use it like it's free. You don't need to tape the whole box, but make sure the box is taped well. That's the side we made. It looks like a box. Worked out pretty good. I'm going to set this. This guy should slide right down in there. You fit right down in there. Perfect. There's about an inch left over. So I probably could have went with 22 inches instead of 23. But I'm not going to recut the box. I'm just going to go for it. That void there, I'm going to go ahead and fill that with some masking paper. Comes in sheets. Fit it up so that it fills the void. All right, put a piece of tape across those to hold them down. Then all you really need is a crisscross here like this, and that's all they use to hold in the uh, tent of that box. But, again, I like to use tape like it's free, and I like to cover the edge. All right, now this box is ready to get weighed and you shipped.